8.30, time to call the June meeting of the Land, Water, and Forest Resources Committee. Time to order. Okay, Madam Clerk, we have a roll call, please. Bruce Paulson. Here. Brian Buckle. Present. Jesse Betcher. Here. Mark Elwig. Here. Brian Bizonette. Kevin Shepard. Here. All right, well, let the record show we have a quorum. Uh, and of course, should we comply with the open meetings laws? The meeting has been noticed to the public and news media as required by section 19.84 of the Wisconsin statutes. Very good. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Is there any member of the public who would like to make a comment on something that is not on the agenda? Now is your time. Anybody? Okay, very good. Thank you. The next order of business is the minutes from the uh, May meeting. Entertain a motion to approve those minutes. So I'll make that motion, Mr. Okay. Chair, to approve as presented. All right. Second? I'll second it. All right. Motion has been made and seconded to approve the minutes. Any discussion? All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carried. Well, we're up to the land records and county surveyors report. Um, I don't have much to report. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of time spent on addressing problems with the address. More problems show up. <laughs> and so that takes a bunch of time. Um, tax listing isn't going okay. Survey crew work in. <coughs> Draper, Ojibwa, and he were in the last month or so. Now we're I had one guy quit, so I've got short staff, so the other guy is by himself, so he's doing a bunch of GPS control work for the, the DOT to update National Geodetic Survey stuff for a new system they're doing. Um, that's about it. Okay. Other than spending way too much time working on the new time file system. <laughs> All right, any questions for the survey? Very good, thank you. Uh, we're next up to the forest department. The first item is the ordinance. Yeah, we have the uh, county forest ordinance that goes along into our 15 year plan. Um, this particular ordinance uh, spells out the duties and power of the committee, um, forest designation, uh, county forest law administration, and, and some of our financing. Um, this is a reworked uh, version from uh, Rebecca for legal counsel. Um, I think some of the issues were cleaned up that were brought up as a concern from before, but I don't know if there's there's more questions or concerns at this time. You're comfortable with it? Yeah, it's uh, it's it's pretty similar to, to what we had, but there's just some tweaks that Rebecca made to this that I think kind of uh, uh, clears things up a little bit, a little bit more definition to how we do things, but otherwise I think it's a, it's a pretty good ordinance for, for our basic operations. Okay, so the, the order of business would be to, if we approve the ordinance, pass it on to the county board for approval. Yep. Okay. Any discussion? Anybody have any questions, comments about this proposed ordinance? Revision? Okay. I guess, uh, entertain a motion then to approve the ordinance and pass it on to the county board. I'll make that motion to approve the ordinance and I'll second. I'll second. county board. All right. Motion's been made and who do you want to have a second? <laughs> Mr. Helding and Mr. Vista. Okay. Pick one. Pick one. Yeah. Time. All right. Okay. Motion's been made and seconded to approve the County Forest Ordinance, pass it on to the County Board. Any discussion? All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carried. Okay, next item is the Berkey proposal for solar panels on the double O trailhead. 
Yep, as we talked about last month, uh, Ben kind of brought a uh, preliminary proposal up. Uh, we've got a little more detail about what they're looking at doing at double O, and I think I'd let Ben explain this a little better. Sure. Um, yeah, I, don't, I mean, there's not a ton more detail in there. It's pretty simple. Uh, it actually, you know, we, we put about 100 panels in that parking lot. In the North parking lot, you can see what it would look like. Uh, it would be connected to the, the building and uh, through Jump River. And we're working with uh, True North Solar. They're the people that uh, did the car charging station there as well. So um, that's about all I know. It's, <laughs> it's about that. That's about all there is to it. And it's supposed to run the lights too? Yeah, it's to cover all the power at the at the <coughs> So what how, must store the electricity during the day and some batteries? No, it's well it's twofold. So we have we do have two meters there. It basically we're any the way the the way the solar system is done with Jump River, they have what's called a true update. Yeah. I don't know if you're familiar with that or not. So you're making power all year long, let's say you make a hundred kilowatts of power. And you use uh, 101, well, you end up having to pay for that extra one. But they essentially are storing it for okay. you. Um, and then at the end, they have a true update, which in this case is May 1. <coughs> May 1. Uh, that then zeroes out if you've used more than you've made or you've made more than you used. Right. Okay. So, Greg, you're. Any questions or comments about this? You know, I checked into it, and there's no restrictions on county forest land for, for solar panels. I mean, I think especially in a situation like this, we're not taking anything out of production to put these up. They're just sitting in a parking lot. You know, I think if we were making space for solar panels, I think that might be a little bit different discussion. But as it sits now, I mean, there's, there's no issues with county forest law with this. Um, I think our biggest concern would have been aesthetic issues you know at the site there but i haven't heard any negative comments since we we brought this up last month okay so you're recommending we proceed then and we'll approve the i think it's a good project yeah okay all right so then we would need a motion to approve the berkey uh double o solar panel proposal i'll make that motion mr chairman okay is there a second to the motion I'll second it. Okay, motion has been made and seconded to approve the Berkey uh, 00 solar panel array. Uh, any more discussion? <clears throat> yes, Mr. Chairman. Yes, go ahead. Yes, yeah, so it's listed there, uh, list number five. It says if there's uh, any excess power, it would be sent back to the grid slash jump river. But I don't think it would be sent back, just given back. Uh, they would sell that back. Is that correct? So there would actually be uh, money made by the Berkey. They would make a profit off this. Is that correct? So the way it works is right. If you were to, if so, you make the power uh, back, and then they have the true update. And if you have any extra, if you do have any extra power, um, you do get paid. Um, I believe it's six cents or four cents per kilowatt over and above if you do make more. Um, although the, the way the system and the way they allow you to do it through, we did it through um, True North Solar and uh, Solar for Good. The way they um, um, size them is that you can only make it up to 125% of what your previous usage was. And so that's how they size. With the addition of uh, the um, Cordy start area and the start building and usage there, uh, or the with a start area, that's why we we're able to go 20% larger. But yeah, that's the that's right. It just seems like with 100 solar panels, and I mean, I'm pretty sure that you're going to be making a lot more electricity than you're going to be using. So I just don't know. It just seems strange that you know you're uh, going to be making profit off of the uh, use of the county forest land. I have no further questions. All right, any more discussion to the motion that's been made and seconded? Uh, Mr. Chair, I just want to make it known that I have the same concerns as Mr. Betcher. Okay. All right, any, any more discussion? Okay, hearing none, all in favor of the motion, aye. 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 Opposed? Nay? I'm nay. Okay. Do you want your name recorded? Yes, please. All right. Jesse. That's Jesse. Okay.
Thank you. Motion. And I believe this doesn't have to go to the county board, does it? I don't believe so. Okay. All right, Greg, you're up on economic development of forest yeah. products. Yeah, last month um, there was two uh, forestry listening sessions, and this was put on uh, a joint effort between Wisconsin Economic Development Corporation and Wisconsin Council of Forestry. Um, basically they're looking at they're trying to set new new goals for diversifying the forest products industry in wisconsin um i i sat in on one of these sessions and i since i've gone back and i've i've listened through some of the other breakout sessions to kind of get the the gist of this um it's just kind of a just a discussion a starting point about how they're gonna how we're gonna diversify the forest industry at this point um a lot of this stuff, uh, you know, the paper industry was in a slow decline before COVID hit. And I think, you know, with COVID and Verso, everybody really, it's like, it was quite shocking what happened. And, you know, it might be a little bit uh, late to the game, but, uh, you know, there's some good, some good discussions on here. Um, you know, I really don't know where they're going to go with this. Um, I mean, you can talk uh, uh, government uh, programs for this, but the, the thing I, I kept on taking out of this is like, well, we can have a more of a diverse market, but the market still has to drive drive these products. So while there's a lot of good ideas about different markets and and different regulations, I, I still think we're we're kind of stuck with with the market dictating how this goes. And the one point that came out, and it's what I've always kind of noticed in my short time is. The industry does tend to pivot. You know, we, we've gone through multiple different market uh, declines. You know, just in the 25 years that I've been in it now, and and you know, the industry seems to find a way to pivot to find a new market. But um, there was a lot of discussion, a lot of different people at the table. Um, it was it was a good starting point, I think. But I'm not sure where they're going to go with this. I mean, I think we're still talking about trying to artificially prop up. You know some of this industry so okay. is there any role for the, this committee or the county to play as long as long as we're at the table um we have a seat on the wisconsin council of forestry our executive director takes up a, a seat there so she represents our interests on that she was uh, part of the panel on here as well um i just i think it's just something that we have to pay attention to um this is all tied in um the, uh, the State Assembly Committee on State Affairs uh, earlier this week voted to pass Assembly Bill 367, which is the mill bill, um, where it's, it's providing assistance to support the purchase of the Versal Mill in Rapids. Um, and that tied up in that, it's a 15, uh, $50 million loan from stimulus money from the federal government and a $50 million loan from the Board of Commissioners for Public Lands. And they're hoping to, to put this out there. They're a cooperative that's looking at purchasing that Verso Mill in Rapids. Okay. So, and also they're, they're part of that bill is with uh, the Park Falls Mill also to get a loan of like 15 million to try to get them up and going. So it went through the first step at the assembly uh, committee and it has to be voted on by the full state assembly probably later this month. So right. there, there's a lot going on. Um, the Verso Mill in Duluth sold Right. Um, and they're converting to tissue paper. Um, that's a lot of the big questions with Verso and Rapids. It's the, the coated paper is probably not going to be the product there anymore. It's gonna they're gonna have to convert. They're gonna have to switch to to something else, likely. So, but you know, I, as long as we pay, it, we'll we'll keep on this. I'll, I'll I'll keep sitting in on whenever we have these meetings, these calls, and. Anything, anything for the committee, the county to step into, I'll let you know. All right. Any good report? Any questions for Greg? Oh, no, that's good report. Thanks, Greg. All right. Recreational trails report. Motorized. Good morning. Good morning. So your county alliance, we're very lucky with the volunteers that we have. We've got a lot of good volunteers out there. And particularly right now, we've got Tim Davidson, who is a retired contractor, heavy equipment contractor and such. And the last couple of weeks, he's been out there inspecting all of our trails. <clears throat> yeah, it's important for us because, as Greg can testify, we're not really building trails anymore. We're building roads out there to, to handle the traffic. And the last couple of years here, 
those trails have been getting pounded. So we need to have somebody that's very knowledgeable about that kind of work out there. And he's out there inspecting our trails for us and making recommendations on what we're going to do to, do to get them back up to, to standards. Uh, we got quite a few grants out there, plus just a regular maintenance is going to take more work out there. Um, Sealy Hills, we've had the road grader up there. Down in Tuscobia, we've had a road grader down there trying to build the trails up to standards. And along with that, Tim's also GPSing our trails because come this winter now, all of our groomers will have GPS units in them. And that's going to be how the funding's been, the state DNR is going to be taking care of the funding is by the time those GPS units are showing on the trail systems. So he's making sure all of our trails are actually GPS for that. So along with that, we've been getting a lot of traffic out there. The trail's been very busy, been a good season so far. And uh, hope to get our trails up in a good shape right now. Perfect. Yep, even during the week, they're busy. <clears throat> oh, yeah, it's not just weekends anymore. No, it's, it's during the week, yeah. All week long, it's been good. Okay. Any more questions for Mr. Morote? Anybody out in line have questions? Um, Ms. Zilmer has a hand up. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead, Ms. Zilmer. Good morning, Linda Zilmer. Um, I also wanted to mention that Mr. Morotek was at Monday's committee meeting of extension and economic development, where there uh, was an agenda item regarding the mission statement to put, you know, to address your concerns from uh, that being sent back from full county board. I spoke during public comment to let committee members know that at one time in not that long ago, there was no economic development committee. And my observation over the many years is that um, certain groups came, started re coming to that committee. Uh, largely, it had to do with uh, requests for funding from, I believe it was like the ATC funds and resource development funds, and to um, express their belief that the economic development these groups or that these activities provided, um, you know, was kind of the reason why support was needed. Um, so aside from whatever future conversations you have with the, um, the mission statement for that committee, there was discussion about um, really something like these motorized uh, sports. Um, Ha touch on a number of different committees. It's not just uh, economic development or land, water, and forestry. Uh, in, in my one of the arguments I've long made is there's also highway and public safety issues involved here. So uh, the, pub uh, the Public Works Committee in uh, Sawyer County has, I believe, chosen to ignore my request to look at a road route policy similar to Washburn County. Um, there was some discussion on Monday about trail maintenance. So this kind of got into the overlap between committees. So I did not hear much of the specifics of the trail maintenance that was discussed on Monday, which I would have expected to hear here. And I'm also not hearing any committee uh, hearing the many problems we're having with ATV, UTV traffic. Again, last night in, in the Edgewater Town Board meeting, um, especially with opening up road routes, we have ATVs going into all hours of the night. They have loud um, radio. Ms. Zeller, could you, could you wrap it up, please? Yeah, and, and then I would also like to just ask from the, when the forestry department or the DNR um, gives their report, uh, if they would please address the forest tent caterpillar situation, which is becoming a problem here in the southern part of the county. I believe we're in a second year of a cycle. But no, I, I hope this that that the com committees get a a complete view of what's going on with motorized sports, and then maybe even Mr. Morotek doesn't have to attend multiple meetings. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Not motorized. You got a report? We do. Uh, not nearly as good as Don's. Um, the trails are they are open. Obviously, they've been the ski trails have been getting mowed, and uh, the mountain bike trails are had their first race this past weekend. I think they had 900 riders for the Bora Epic, uh, which started in at Hatchery and went up north to the Cable. 
Um, the, uh, the Double O Nordic Center has now been open. Uh, Christian has worked with Julia, and so that building and all the trailhead buildings are now open, getting cleaned uh, weekly. And other than that, it seems like, again, similar to motorized, there's a lot of trail users, so it's a good time to be able to on the, on the trails. Perfect. Any, any questions? For me? No? And there's a volunteer night tonight if you want to come pick rocks. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Drake, you're up for your forest report. Okay. For a uh, month of May, we had six sales listed as active. Uh, sale value sold and uncut on file right now is just over 4.4 million. Our sale revenue for May was uh, just over 135,000. So we did break a million here this month. Um, so we're uh, we're on track for our budgeted amount as things sit right now, barring any further catastrophes. Um, sale build out right now is uh, 61,000. Uh, sale inspections are on target for level of activity. Uh, one track turned in this month. Uh, recon is on target. Uh, we're still continuing on. Uh, we're just wrapping up our uh, for year 21 uh, GNA contracts and we're preparing our, our for, for year 22 right now. Um, still waiting for our reimbursements to come in. They should be in shortly for that. Other than that, um, ATV, uh, UTV trails, we did have our bid proposals due on May 28th. Uh, we, are, we bid out six rehab projects. Uh, we did receive bids on all six projects. Um, low bid on all of them was Stout Construction. Uh, they, they did a three Tuscobia rehabs for us last year. Uh, they do pretty good work. Um, for the projects, we are uh, under our grant amount, uh, but two of them we had to uh, shave off a little bit of materials and shorten up some distances to get under our, uh, our grant funding. So currently right now I'm in conversation with them to, to get contracts uh, finalized and get our numbers solidified to get these projects done. So that's all I have. Is there a problem with pen caterpillars? I don't, not that I'm aware of, I guess I haven't, I haven't really seen any tent caterpillars of any real uh, great population. We've been seeing a lot of the little green, right? the little green curlers or whatever those are, but uh, right. you know, okay. we're sometimes that the tent caterpillar spikes up every 20 years or so you get an outbreak, but I don't right. think we're at, I'll look into it. Okay, good. Any questions for? Right, uh, his report. No. Okay. All right. DNR. Um, just to follow up with that, I know Paul Segan did some sampling this winter uh, of some stands of aspen that were cut during the winter. He sampled the tops for cake masses. There was one site you know, on the Sealy Hills, off of Sealy Fire Lane. There was a site. Well, two sites down in winter. There was one off the of old G by the old gravel pit. There was one on the Flambeau River State Forest. I think there was another site on the National Forest just in the Ashland County. And I know that uh, as far as the results, there was going to be no, Paul said there really wasn't going to be any really significant impacts as far as the forest tent caterpillar outbreak. Now, there was no sampling done down by Birchwood, you know, so I can't really speak to that, but I could ask him to follow up on that the next meeting. Yeah, why don't you do that? That would be great. Um, as far as forestry, uh, fire suppression, uh, with green up conditions, um, efforts have been scaled back, but they're ongoing as conditions warrant. Um, that's mostly in Douglas Bayfield counties because of the pine fuels, uh, precipitation, and whatnot. Uh, so far in the county this year, there were 28 fires burning a total of a little over 14 acres. The largest fire occurred in the winter response unit. That was just under seven acres. Statewide, there have been 673 fires accounting for 1,879 acres burned. Uh, the largest fire was down in Juneau County, burning 257 acres, and that was uh, railroad related. Um, 
far as industry news, uh, there were some business tran transactions that took place uh, with some of the local manufacturing. As Greg mentioned, uh, the, the Verso mill up in Duluth was sold. That was acquired by ST Paper. Um, Domtar, uh, they have mills in Rothschild and Nakusa, but they also have a wood yard off of 48, uh, just west of Exelent. Uh, that's been acquired by Paper Excellence. And then uh, Lignetics, which is a parent company of Marth Wood Supply, they have, they have acquired the Great Lakes Renewable Energy Plant, which is the pellet plant on 63 South. Um, Work projects on the South Sawyer County Forest. We just completed 57 acres of tree marking uh, in Northern Red Oak, uh, the Sealy Hills block, and we've been assigned another project down by Cooter A, and that's underway. Uh, fisheries, uh, Nelson Lake was uh, shocked the third week of May. Um, overall, it looked pretty good. Uh, there were no, there was no evidence of any decline or large scale die off in the drawdown. Um, Max will get up uh, some reports submitted to local newspapers in the next week or two. Um, trails and boat landings, um, Sand Lake boat landing, that project has started. Uh, there's been a partial closure starting June 1st, and that project is scheduled for completion by July 28th. A winter depot, um, bathrooms are open, and signs will be posted on the trails for the riders. Um, a beverage machine will be purchased and placed outside of the building in the next few weeks. And the Friends Group <clears throat> has been okay to have the building open for public, for the public, uh, for special events and occasions. And uh, part of the Tuscobia Trail uh, Capital Development Project applications have been submitted, but they're not yet funded uh, for culvert repairs and APHIS contract for beaver mitigation and more extensive trail maintenance and culvert repairs. On the Flambeau River State Forest, the Connors Creek ATV bridge is out. Uh, the trail reroute has been in place and all parties and authorities have been notified. Uh, for wildlife, uh, elk, uh, there's gonna be an elk festival in Clam Lake this year on September 25th. Um, the Wisconsin Department of Tourism is providing some support for this. And the purpose is to help promote tourism in the area. Uh, elk harvest quota. The NRB has approved a harvest quota of eight, eight elk, uh, just like they have done in the past. Four tag will go to the Native American Indian tribes, three to the state of Wisconsin residents, and one to the Rocky Mountain Elk Foundation for drawing. Uh, the elk management plan that was tabled by the Natural Resources Board at last month's meeting. Um, there was a question regarding elk mortality in the last meeting from Mr. Buckholz. <clears throat> Everybody got a copy of this? Yes, very interesting. I, this is from the draft management plan uh, that was submitted to the Natural Resources Board. I believe the question was uh, vehicle collisions. And that's number two. If you look on the yes. uh, it's like 13% of the total from 1995 to 2020. Uh, the number one is wool predation. Um, there's other causes that are like from parasites, other infectious diseases, drowning, birthing complications, and whatnot. So, you can go into more detail. Or? No, I mean this is this is good. I, this okay. is pretty much what I was asking for to see what what was out there on vehicle collisions okay. on the health, because you don't hear much about no. that. So. <clears throat> So did, did this get to the folks that are on virtual? No, we just got oh, right. I, put, I came in here like a week ago when I, I asked this to put in a mailbox in case they come in. I don't know. Right. Okay. Did you jump off? Yeah, I put it, I gave it to Sandy. Yep. I, I, asked her, I think all I, copies are here. It's only one one paper copy to make an electronic okay. copy of. Okay, so you can get it to the virtual mm -hmm. people. Okay, um, good. Thank you. Okay. And then uh, going back to fire suppression, one thing I, I got in my notes here. Uh, our in-person emergency fire wardens, they, they were allowed to resume, resume their services in person. Uh, that was effective Thursday, June 3rd. Um, 
So that was kind of on hold due to COVID-19 concerns. Uh, and getting back to wildlife, um, white-tailed deer, uh, the harvest quotas that were approved by the county CDAX, those will go to the NRB by the end of the month. And then uh, lastly, you know, bear activity is on the rise due to their mating season, which is currently active. And at this time of the year, many species of animals give birth. Uh, then they leave their young by themselves while, they, while the parents go out and feed. And the DNR would just like to remind the public to leave wildlife wild. Uh, they're most likely not. Uh, they may appear abandoned, but they're most likely not. So that's all I have. Um, Greg, on the, the mill transactions, is that going to impact us at all? The Duluth first mill of anything? Duluth, not so much. I mean, we never really, I mean, uh, open mills, it's a, it's a good thing for the industry. Um, it's not going to have a huge impact on us right now, as I see. Uh, the, the pellet mill, that should probably be business as usual. Uh, yeah. That was a small, uh, fairly small volume of wood that was, was going to that mill. So okay. um, as right. long as they're not sitting idle, it's, it's going to be a positive. All right. Any any questions on the DNR report? Go I ahead. do. I have a question for the DNR man. Um, Lake Winter. Um, I don't know if anybody's told the DNR or anything about this, but there is massive quantities of dead fish along the shore up there. Okay. Every day you go out there, there's more. Okay. And there's uh, I noticed I was up there yesterday, and there's some dead muskrats up there in the same spots. So. Um, North end of the lake. Something. Yeah, it's on the north end of the lake on Lake Winter Road, right where it comes, okay. the water comes up to the road there on that big stretch. Okay. 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 We'll, we'll look into it. We'll okay. Look into Appreciate time. that. So you want to answer next at the next committee? Or? Yeah, I would. Yeah, to see what it is. Uh, I don't know what's killing them, but the fish, they're, they're pan fish, uh, crappies and bluegills, and there was a big northern uh, one red horse, but there's a lot of the pan fish. Okay. Crappies and bluegills mainly. All right. Mr. Morota. On that Connors Bridge down there on the Trail 25, can you check and see what the status is for your plans on doing it? Right now it's rerouted to the ATVs on the road there. The problem is is the snowmobiles aren't going to be able to use that road route. So I'll, I just hope that we have something in place for the snowmobiles to sit here and I want to bring it sure. up. We'll bring it up. That's that's one road I've had phone calls in my office where people complaining about the AP tra ATV traffic on the Trail 20 down there. So apparently there's a bunch of ATV traffic that people aren't used to. Right, right. We just rerouted that on there just two months ago. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions? Yeah. Okay. Um, Mr. Chair. Yes, go ahead. Yeah, just a quick question on that. Oh, harvest quota i noticed that the uh, quota for wisconsin residents has dropped by 25 percent over the last couple of years uh, is there a reason for that has our elk herd uh, been declining as opposed to increasing um that i don't know as far as i know it's, it's always been like it um, now the last couple of years it's been 10 tags total uh five for the natives four for Wisconsin residents, and this year it's eight total with three for Wisconsin residents. So, uh, I mean, that's a 25% decrease for us. And I'm just wondering, I thought the elk herd was increasing, but based on your numbers, maybe it's not. Oh, I'll get back with you on that. Okay. I'll talk to Josh and see what he has to see. All right. Jesse, is that okay? Get back to us. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm just concerned because, like I said, I've been led to believe that the herd was increasing in size, but with the reduced numbers, uh, I just want to know if it's actually going down. Uh, can I come in on this? Sure. Go ahead, Mr. Visitor. Okay, so last year the elk harvest was set at 10 by the Natural Resources Board, even though the recommendation was only for six bulls to be taken, which it, it is a split harvest between tribes and non-tribal. And 
they went against the scientific data because the the idea is they want to keep a one to one bull to cow ratio in order to make sure that the the herd is going to be sustainable and grow um and that's why the tribe declared the tribes declared well we get half of it um we declared our five but we didn't take any because we want to follow the science and so this year um the recommendation from the scientists were eight bulls and so um that's probably why you're seeing it they're they're looking at it from a scientific point of view is to ensure that we have a sustainable herd okay jesse are you okay with that answer yeah, hey, thanks, Brian. Uh, I wasn't aware of that scientific data. I'm just wondering if if the DNR can maybe look at just ha issuing maybe a couple cow tags, perhaps split, you know, uh, two or three cow tags and two or three bull tags. That's all. All yeah. right, good. <clears throat> Thank you. Any more questions or comments on the DNR report? Okay, moving on is... Uh, Conservation online. Yeah, I'm here. Okay, go ahead, sir. Yeah, conservation update for um, well, middle of May there to current. Um, conservation department collaborated with NRCS for um, potential grazing operations, uh, site visits for those. Uh, we're into full swing of dam operations and uh, controlling water levels on the several own county dams. Um, still wrapping up and completing quite a few shoreline design projects. Uh, we met with DACAP engineer on some of those projects as well. We started our rollout on septic pumping reminders. Every year we send out batches of postcards for those that haven't had any type of service record on a septic tank within the last three years. Uh, we don't throw them all out at, at one batch, but we've uh, got about 1,600 to 2,000 of them out right now. Uh, so the pumpers are certainly gonna be pretty busy. Uh, as far as the technicians and the other staff, uh, nine, on, nine on sites were conducted by Tim Seidel for compliance checks and erosion control plans. We're getting quite a few complaints on uh, certain people not following rules as far as shoreline vegetation removal, erosion control measures not in place. Uh, so that's kind of the, the busy work that we're experiencing at this point. Um, Kelly Nahuda did five of those on sites. Um, again, additional mitigation uh, compliance checks will be scheduled here for the next few months. So there are certain projects through the zoning department that require some form of mitigation on, on certain projects, be it in the form of a shoreline vegetation mitigation or the installation of a rain garden. Or these are, are certain state statutes that are implemented through zoning NR-115 parameters. But we have to have someone from either our department or conservation department to go out and do those physical checks. So. Uh, that is also going to be occurring here uh, over the summer months when we have actual vegetation present. So uh, all in all, it's it's an extremely busy summer. Um, I've worked here in the zoning department for 12 years and I've never seen a summer this busy. Um, if that's any indication, that's just on the conservation side and, and it's even more so busy on the zoning side. Uh, thus the reason of the multitasking that I'm uh, trying to do here this morning. Okay. All right. Any, any questions on the... Uh... Conservation Department report. All right, thank you. USDA, you got a report? Yeah, uh, USDA offices are operating at 50% staff level now. Uh, In-person um, visits are by appointments only right now. And they ask if you're not vaccinated, you still wear your mask and stuff. Uh, crop reporting is in full swing. All maps have been sent to producers. Um, they have July 15th as a deadline to report their crops. Um, the CRP program, they still have it ongoing, which Sawyer County don't have anybody enrolled, but they upped uh, the price to $73 an acre. It went from $29 to, to $44 per acre right now, if you want to get involved in it. So, and then um, county committee elections and nominations will start here next month. So that's it. Right. Any questions on the uh, USDA report? Mr. Bizonet, do you have uh, any report on LCO? Well, I do have a few things. Um, my department is mainly um, starting to address 
trail maintenance. Um, for our HV trails, we've got a lot of bad spots, but we've been starting to repair some of them. Um, maintaining the Chippewa Flowage Islands, these are uh, campsites that we offer to the public. Um, our annual water testing is resumed. Um, we're starting to coordinate with um, Michael Falk, who is the from the Wisconsin Department of Agriculture, Trade, and Consumer Protection on gypsy moth trapping. We're going to start that again because we actually found a couple gypsy moths last year. Um, and then uh, my enforcement officers are responding. You know, as as stated earlier by the DNR, the the mating season's here for bears. We're getting calls day and night every day from community members and so these bears are uh, taking up a lot of our time as well so that's about all i have any questions on the lcl report all right thank you uh any other items of business that we should be dealing with okay here we go we're adjourned thank you everybody thank you mr paulson you're going to have the...